Good day, good afternoon, good evening, my friends, again, from all around the world. I'm very happy that you are here with me. And, oh, I was almost on time, just two minutes late, so <laughs> apologies for a slight delay. But uh, I needed to prepare some materials and documents and things that I want to show you today. So, uh, still, this is the second week uh, of uh, our renewed sessions and meetings. So, I would like to thank you for being here and just greet a uh, lot of known faces and names. Lady Kefera, long time no see. Fossilize 3 sep thank you very much. I have seen your message on Patreon. And uh, thank you. I will probably reply a little bit <laughs> later. Uh, and Aaron, yeah, that's that's great to see you, man. Like this is uh, you are re here really on a fortunate time. Uh, I think we are going to speak about the spirit that might uh, interest you. I know that we had some workings with some spirit. I will not say which one because yeah, I have to take the, pr the privacy. Uh, and respect the privacy of yours, but uh, you know whom I mean. And um, this is going to be interesting. So thank you very much all to be here. Uh, before we start, just very briefly about the organization of things. I'm still trying to find the best time for our weekly session, whether it be Tuesday or Wednesday. I think uh, Wednesday is uh, a little bit better for me. So let's see how it goes. Also, I have submitted a special video stream on Sunday about the Picatrick book. So if you haven't seen it and you are interested, uh, the stream is available. Uh, I plan to continue with the streams re in regards of some books also in the future. But today I have a little bit different topic on mind, uh, and it's it will be mostly regarded to the spirits that can bring, or are known to be bringing, or uh, wealth, financial, material success. Uh, some even believe that these energies or spirit can open gates to hidden treasures. And uh, yeah, the, when, when you look at it like from the um, eyes of someone who is really new to magic or just knows it from movies or some kind of stories, it seems like a fiction, right? Yeah, like everyone would think like, okay, some people, naive people believe that there is a spirit that can bring you a pot of gold or something that can bring you to some that hidden near the crossroads, there is a hidden treasure. But especially for me, coming from Europe, from the central city of Europe, at least once in two months, you always have newspapers with uh, newspapers messages about people that found actual treasure. <laughs> uh, they really found the pot of gold, like the old coins, uh, somewhere from the Middle Ages, even from the older times. Uh, the truth is, maybe it's a coincidence. I, I understand that they might have been not in contact with the spirits, but you know how it goes. The, the, the places, uh, people were trying to hide the money, hide the treasures, gold, everything. And uh, sometimes you can find those things, even now. Yeah. So, um, but is this magic? Yeah. Is, is it something like that? Mm, what really intrigued me about this all the time when I was reading the stories was the relative like that we have so many stories like this everywhere in so many cultures but especially uh from from uh, ancient times uh there were always stories that hidden in some kind of caves there are spirits elemental spirits mostly earthly spirits dwarves yeah the dwarves were practically considered elements of earth hiding uh, rich resources and in so many, hi Katrina, in so many um, uh, source books, uh, grimoires, uh, mostly um, Red Dragon, for example, or even Picatrix, well, we, I have mentioned before, 
or uh, this uh, there are others yeah that are maybe uh, the book of Moses, the fifth book of Moses, I haven't reviewed that, but uh, uh, I plan to in near future, the fifth book of Moses, which is uh, uh, a famous grimoire from Victorian ages, 19th century, 18th, 19th century. Uh, you have a lot of stories and even, even uh, mentioning of the spirits that can bring this to you. Yeah. Uh, in the books that uh, general practitioners of demonolatry work with, mostly uh, greater and lesser key of Salomon. You have several spirits bringing this uh, that are uh, that are known or even like mentioned that they can bring the wealth. And uh, later, even in my favorite Grimoire Verum, you know, there are certain spirits uh, that can bring or are known that they can bring the, the, the gold or richness mostly clownic, let's say. Yeah, some of you know uh, the entity, the very famous entity that is practically, uh, her sigil is hidden, not shown in the Grimoire Verum. In, uh, no, uh, there are some theories what the sigil might be and so on, uh, yeah, whether it's uh, the uh, part of this grand Luciferian sigil in Grimoire Verum or it's not. But, Anyway, uh, those working with certain type of energies can uh, find out the sigil of their own. So, uh, hi Stefania, <laughs> nice to have you here. Uh, it's uh, it's that there is these stories are so prevalent, yeah. And uh, in the time of uh, of medieval times, uh, uh, it was very popular. Later on in the, uh, in, I speak, 14th, 15th century. Uh, later on, uh, I think now, uh, when there was a Gutenberg press uh, invented, uh, Gutenberg practically created the machine that was able to print not only uh, manuscripts, but it was possible to print and create books in uh, mass scale. So 16th century on onwards. Uh, it's very popular uh, between mo mostly people to find a lot of grimoires where you could invoke certain spirit and receive the treasure. The treasure was usually brought to you by vision, that there is a specific vision. You give some kind of, uh, you do some kind of spell or ritual, pact or something. And during the vision, uh, you will see the place where the treasure is hidden. And of course, uh, there was a lot of uh, scam around. Yeah, so people were scamming around, like in today. Yeah, people will try to tell you, I will do the ritual for you, and uh, next day you will win the lottery. Yeah, or uh, I will do the ritual for you, and uh, you will find you will inherit some money. Yeah, so it's nothing new. So uh, those of you that. Uh, are new with us, please, if someone tells you, and I will get, I will try to answer why I think this type of magic does not work from a magical perspective, is that nothing is easily done. Yeah. So there was a lot of scams. People bought some kind of grimoire for a lot of money and they, they started to do some kind of right. Uh, they slayed a chicken, for example, and wanted to have it. Uh, later on, the Inquisition found out and uh, they ended uh, in, in bad situation. So my question for myself was always, is this, uh, that's it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, finding treasure through magic really a uh, scam or, or just a naivety, naivete of people. Uh, mm, when I read this Picatrix that, that was I, uh, which was I reviewing last week, uh, on Sunday, uh, a lot of people wanted to improve their financial situation by this magic. But what I really liked uh, later on when I was studying Grimoire and Verum and the, the Clownic, for example, or Mammon, yeah, uh, yes, uh, I'm referring also to the to the review that I, oh, not review, the, the, the the small video about Mammon and uh, Clownek, I, I was doing that together. 
maybe two years ago. I, I watched that video recently, and I think that uh, although a lot of facts there, I am developing myself as a magician as well, I perceive a lot of things slightly differently from that time. So uh, speaking about the clown, like, uh, the, the entity of, uh, of Grimoarum Verum, it's practically considered a spirit or an energy that can brought you to a vision of yourself in, in a trance state where you see your position or general worth in the material way of thinking. So it's practically showing you psychologically the mirror of your abilities, what you can do, where you are strong at, where you are weak at, uh, and uh, where lies the, your possibility for further success. So it's not immediate uh, magic that you work with Klonek and you are getting rich immediately. But there are strange things because I did a lot of rituals in my time uh, with Klonek uh, months or years ago where I really was in difficult financial situation and I really wanted to have some breakthrough. And it maybe it's just a coincidence, but really the uh, next day I found money on the street. That, uh, that was uh, interesting. It was just lying there. I found it. Yeah, not much, but it was like, I don't know. Uh, I think it was 50 euros. So it's almost $55 at that moment. You find to find $50 on, on the street. Why not? Yeah, it could go to some groceries or things like that. No one was there. One day, even to say, to speak about these stories, I was walking around the ATM machine and the ATM machine started to beep. And I really mean that when I was doing this magic and it, it had, um, I, I'm coming from Czech Republic, so it had 5,000 crowns there. Yeah. Yeah. The rule or the law of the, uh, in such situation is to wait because the ATM should take the money back. So... Yeah, I can't say whether <laughs> what I did, but uh, yeah. So when you, when you see it, you should probably wait until the ATM machine takes the money back. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, the, the thing is that uh, uh, there was no one there. It was not that someone like poor soul was just trying to take the money. They forgot the money, and the uh, and the ATM machine was. Uh, 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 beeping, please take my money, because usually this, the period of, of it is, I think, 10, 10 to 20 seconds. No, the, the street was empty. The, the ATM was practically giving the money. So really this happened. Yeah, so yeah, OK. So um, strange things or, or, or uh, like these were happening. But it was never like to find a pot of gold. Yeah, or, or something that I would be a millionaire from now on. Yeah, so, and it was not even my intention. Uh, because like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think that this happens to many people working with this. So Katrina is yeah, writing also that, yeah, that, that she was working with Mammon and I was speaking about, about Mammon a lot now. And this happened. So uh, maybe it's not about specific spirit but really working on these type of things yeah so uh i realized that what started to change was the way how i perceived the value of things uh it's it, it started to slightly change me that i have started to see the opportunities how to be more successful in something uh and I will be absolutely frank here. When I uh, when I started with this stream, uh, it was also partially at that time uh, from materialistic. Uh, those that are you of you that are watching my videos and know maybe Saturnian night streams, you know that I went through difficult situations in life, and uh, uh, there was a situation that the YouTube, although it was very new channel, was my only way of income. Yeah, and I had to pay rent and everything. So, but before I started to do uh, these streams, it was, of course, I like magic. I like to share knowledge or at least things that I am interested in. But it was like telling me to, to, to start it. Yeah, I was never doubting myself. I really liked it. And uh, somehow I found uh, it was not much. Still, it is uh, the, the channel is small, but 
it always helped a little bit. Yeah, at least my mind was focused on other things. And I, I started to see work and there was this feeling that you are practically programming your reality to become more successful in what you do or the opportunities were opening. Later on, uh, when I was more active in doing this, also these workings for others, it's always a tricky thing because you can put your energy and I believe we can, we can force the energy also to help others. We can do the rituals for others, but the success is very, uh, it's not automatic because it must be received by the person. Yeah. So the person must be open. If the person just automatically expects something, it will probably never happen. But it, if it gives her this charge or sometimes these people have visions, uh, after the rituals, it happened. They told me, yes, the dreams were started. Maybe it was not because of the ritual, but they expected something. Maybe it's a psychological thing. But really, I have got uh, some messages from people that really something happened. I will be totally open. Sometimes people wrote me, I feel nothing. But in that situations, I always knew that probably it's just this automatic waiting for something to happen. So when you do this money magic things, it's just you are expecting, you psychologically setting yourself up for a good thing to happen. Maybe you are watching the street more and you really see the, the, something gold there or, or some money there or something. So uh, thank you, Aaron. <laughs> I hope that, uh, yeah, I know that you are now doing a lot of things by yourself. So you don't need my uh, spiritual rituals anymore. So that's perfect thing. That is a good thing. Yeah. So uh, mm, back to the mammon. Yeah. So I believe that to do the treasure magic is not about finding actual treasure, maybe in a limited way or form, but about really psychologically programming yourself to be successful in something. If you do put some magical thinking into it, you can really program yourself to do a lot of things. Maybe not all things. Yeah, we are. I, I'm not this type of person. I, I know that probably I will be never an astronaut or something, <laughs> but because I'm too old for it and so on. But uh, maybe I can be successful in, in, in other things. So it really opened. I, I was looking for work, for example. I did a, a, a ritual with an entity I don't want to mention. And uh, I knew that, that the work will come and it came. And the work was the type of work that I really wanted to do. But at the moment of the performing of the ritual, I knew that this will happen. And uh, I received a call. The call was not, uh, was there were some coincidences between it. So really you can synchronize a lot of things, but it's not automatic and don't expect that it will automatically happen. So I, you can, how to do this spell? I will tell you later, but I wanted to speak about Mammon. Yeah, so uh, Mammon as such is a is a word that automatically connotates negativity in our in our current culture. If someone takes takes you, oh, he's serving Mammon. Yeah, the 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 devil, the one of the one of the kings of hell. Uh, we spoke about the orders of the spirits last week. We know that Mammon is one of the seven uh, original uh, arch devils of uh, hell, according to some Christian inquisitors. And uh, yes, you cannot serve God and Mammon, said uh, Jesus. Yeah, so uh, Mammon as such is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, uh, he is also partially uh, mentioned in Psalms, uh, like if, uh, if you, I think, uh, Psalm 23 is practically uh, related to greed, Yeah, that uh, you shouldn't be a servant of greed, you shouldn't be a servant of some kind of addiction, and that's true. Yeah, I, uh, if mammon as such from the, uh, is represented by greed, which is incorrect, it, it's, uh, it's, the represent, it's practically uh, it's said by the Christian, and Christians are attributing mammon as a, as a demon of greed, but mammon as such is uh, much more 
is always with this older name. Yeah. So what is Mammon? Mammon is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew. I think it was you can serve both God and Mammon and uh, only personified as greed in, uh, uh, in, uh, in medieval times. But Mammon in Hebrew means money. It's not greed. Uh, so uh, even in modern Hebrew, the world is practically used as a meaning for wealth. Uh, in Latin, uh, it's very similar. Yeah, in Latin, uh, in uh, late in later, I think uh, it's the word mamona means wealth. And uh, uh, in uh, one of the oldest versions of Bible, the Vulgate uh, Bible, uh, and also uh, I think Tertullian is mentioning that uh, mammon is also attributed to wealth, to profit. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, a very old world uh, uh, in Syriac or in our ancient Syria, uh, Mammon is again. It was it was thought that it's even a form of deity, which is important. Yeah, we can say that in Aramaic uh, it was, uh, uh, and later in Greek it represented wealth. But uh, from the understanding of ancient times, we uh, the people were personified, were thinking, okay, what is this wealth? Maybe it's uh, it's an emanation of wealth or something like uh, that. There is an origin of wealth and that some energy can uh, influence how wealth we are or can bring us to wealth. So that's why they started to think about mammon. They started to personalize this word mammon with some kind of deity. It's extremely old word. And um, uh, we find a lot of uh, names for this mammon later on. So uh, only in Christianity, it got this uh, pejorative or pejorative uh, understanding that it's like a excessive materialism, it's greed, it's uh, unjust, uh, worldly gain. Yeah, uh, in, in ancient times, the word mammon or deity of mammon was a positive thing. It was, it, was a, it was a spiritual energy that could brought you to wealth, to success, to, 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 be, to be happy. Yeah. And uh, uh, then we have, of course, uh, other uh, similar names uh, where uh, the word mammon, the wealth, uh, is uh, deified. Uh, uh, there are other names for gods that could bring the wealth. It's not related to mammon, but I found that if we speak about mammon as an archetype of uh, spiritual wealth that can be translated uh, through emanations, this Gnostic emanation to material world, uh, you know where I, uh, uh, what I mean is that there are other names for this type of gods. Yeah, if we if we, if we take that wealth is uh, represented by some god, they were they were uh, there in uh, in Greek in ancient Greek, uh, Mammon was Syriac deity, but in um, in Greece. Uh, ancient Greece, you had a similar deity that represented uh, wealth. Uh, but the deity is not so known, but uh, the name of the deity was Plutus. Plutus was sun, and, and um, why I mentioned Plut mentioning Plutus, because it can give us maybe this hidden understanding of what the, this entity is about. It, because my theory here is that whether it's called Mammon or it's called Plutus or something, the origin, this, this first form of maybe something influencing you to be successful in material world is the same. Some people, it's wealth. But what is wealth? Philosophically, what is wealth? Wealth, wealth is abundance. Abundance of something does not have to represent only gold or money. It means being sufficient in what I am. Yeah, so uh, the Plutus is... Uh, because I don't know much, history does not know much about Syriac uh, deity of Mammon, but we know more about Plutus. And I think the logic is the same almost. Plutus is the son of Demeter and Yason. 
So the meter in uh, or the meter is uh, a goddess of uh, fertility and earth. Earth is a magical element of richness. And Demeter is the is practically she's the daughter of Gaia. Yeah? So so we can say that she is the and Plutus is the, the son of Demeter. Uh, so Plutus is inheriting the wealth of Earth. Who is Yason? Yason is a human being. Yason is a hero. And uh, that shows that these. Like if you look at it from this um, uh, uh, Pythagorean or 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 uh, theory on emanation, or you may say Gnostic later on, but I I, I really want to stay within this uh, 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 the theory of the emana uh, the Platonian I'm sorry the Platonian way of emanations. We can say from Earth the wealth is created. From Earth, like Gaia, the wealth is creating in the form of Demeter. The Demeter is having an interaction with human and Plutus, the wealth is created. So it's uh, it's archaic thinking practically. If I am magician working with the wealth of world, it's practically I am the Yason in the ritual. I, when I was speaking about the rituals, you should always impersonate some kind of um, you know, some kind of entity. You are a god in that ritual because you have the power. So I was trying to do a ritual with uh, with with Plutus. Yeah, that was representing Mammon to me. It's really. Mm, a little bit different form of magic, yeah. But I was really creating like that. I want to replicate something different, not only worshiping Plutus as such, but I wanted to create, yeah. So, so I become in that ritual Yason, a human hero, and I try to connect myself with Demeter, the wealth of things, and the produce of this chemical mm, or or this alchemical thing in the ritual in trance was materialization of Plutus, which represented also Mammon or whatever you want to say. That was my theory. That was my way of doing this magic ritual. And so it's a little bit different approach. You see, it's totally reversed. But you, I was creating, I was materializing Plutus. And Nikki, this is, this is, this is, this is really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. You have you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, you see, I'm very happy to help. Uh, if you like it, thank you. Thanks a lot. So I will buy more books and we'll, we'll discuss uh, more things later. So the ritual was about the materialization of Plutus. I got a vision. I got a vision. Uh, by the way, uh, if you want to see uh, how the Plutus is descripted in in uh, in, uh, in ancient time, we have even the statue of him. So just allow me to show you how it looks like. Yeah, this is this is Plutus. Yeah, uh, the small child. <laughs> the, the Demeter is the it's the it's the goddess Demeter, and the Plutus is this form. Uh, it's a small child. It's kind of funny. Uh, the statue is, of course, uh, I'm, I, I think it's from the ancient times, so it's like 200 before Christ or so. Uh, isn't it uh, very similar later on to this Christian Pietas, where Demeter is just replaced by, by Maria and the child, the Plutus, is practically the Jesus? Yeah, so nothing new under the sun, you see. So, so in the Christianity, they just took a lot of art from ancient times. Oh, okay, but I, I don't want to discuss this right now. So um, uh, my vision was uh, my vision was totally different from this one. I haven't seen Plutus as a child. I, I have seen him in a form, or in, a, in a little bit um, uh, uh, manly form. And uh, the face was really golden. Maybe it was just my, my imagination. Uh, he was practically all in, in gold. And uh, the first reactions that I had with him uh, were negativistic because practically the, the same thing that I had with Klonek, that, uh, it's believed that the Klonek is going to judge you, your worth. And, my, uh, and, and I have got the feeling that 
the entity or the energy does not like me very much. Not because I am some, I have, I have got this like feeling of not worth, not complex of not being worth, but that I am not fulfilling my potential to be successful in this, uh, 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 and to be practically working with him because I'm not connected. I don't want to be well, be wealthy. That was the feeling that you don't want to be wealthy. You just want money, but you don't want to be wealthy. You don't want to be full. You don't want to your potential to be fulfilled. It's psychology. Yeah, I say that there are a lot of things that can make you uh, activate your your feelings for but uh, for for being successful. But this was magical trends, and I I told myself, okay, so what should I do? And then it came. Yeah, like like, like the ideas. Like what to do, where to to be more through, to be more frank in some things, to be to be sparing more money, to be later on if you have have a little bit more and don't spend it on unnecessary things, invest it. Yeah, so I started amateurish uh, thing, but I, I I started investing, and I am also uh, also thinking my inner spirit. Let's call it Plutus. Let's call it Mammon. Like, should I do it? I also study a lot around it. Yeah, so it's not only that I am blindly investing. Yeah, you have to do your job, but you have to understand, for example, the market or something. But it gave me this energy to put effort into learning because the feeling was you have to learn this if you want to be successful in that area. Strangely, the thing slowly started. I got from the words. I got from the, the situations that I had to buy. I don't know. Was, um, to sc sc scrap some money for soup or something, you know. So when I look at it in time, working with, uh, later on, I, I stopped to uh, use the word Plutus. Uh, I, I still like the word Mammon more because maybe it's more connected to my way of thinking. And But the, the feeling of the energy was very similar. Yeah. Yov, uh, um Practically everything can help you, yeah. If you if you connect it with uh, with this imagination of wealth, yeah, of of potentiality, it can. It's not doesn't have to be only Plutus. There is another, you know, um, as Greek culture was uh, later on uh, absorbed mostly by Roman Empire, they were renaming the gods. They were not creating new ones. So they had some Etruscan gods and so on, but mostly they were renewing, uh, re renew, uh, renaming the gods. Yeah, Ares become Mars, yeah, or uh, Zeus uh, become uh, Jupiter. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, Plutus, uh, I would say, become Dispater. Dispater is a Roman god of wealth. And I can uh, I have never invoked this pattern, although I have uh, a quite good affinity to Roman uh, gods. Uh, I, I like even working more with uh, them as with these uh, older Hellenistic forms. So uh, and I can show you later on, but I just want to reply on fossilized three sub that he never approached Mammon through, uh, he did once, from need, Zagan. He acknowledged me and expected, uh, but I did not have energy to work for them. Yeah, it is, um, uh, to work with these energies, I can tell you that many times, even if you are successful with to get this trend state of connection, usually you are being uh, pushed back during the first, uh, first two sessions. You have the, the feeling of the connection, but it takes always something back. And I had it uh, the same way with Plutus. It was like, you will work your uh, yeah, uh, SL4, how to say it. Yeah, sorry for being vulgar. But it it was like, this is going to be a journey. If you want to work with me, if you want to get into this connection, you have to study, you have to understand, you have to be uh, disciplined about everything that you do. And so, mm, and but it was transforming me. And in the meantime, there were these strange things like I, when uh, uh, this ATM machine or something. But it was never pot of gold, nothing like that. Yeah. I don't believe it's possible to do, although there are some rituals, for, for, for example, 
Uh, I have read recently the book, a wooden gnostic Go handbook, not recently, uh, which is interesting book by Albert uh, Bertio, I think. And uh, he is uh, explaining some voodoo magic for small winnings of money. Uh, oh. It can work for small synchronicities. You can even win some small things in dice or gambling. Be careful about that. You will probably lose. But there are some small magic, magic things how to enchant or know your dices or cards or things like that. Even now that, yeah, some rituals can be uh, do, done like that because, for example, casinos or games like that, they will never let you play with your own cards. You know? So maybe they have, uh, I think, uh, they have their own... Casinos have some strange magic in themselves. I think uh, the house always wins is not only saying. It's really magical yeah, for, for those uh, that own the casino. <laughs> and it's a form of magic. But uh, for smaller gambling spells, yes, you can but never much, and you always pay with something. Yeah, so uh, this Pater. This Pater was a, another Roman god uh, that uh, uh, was uh, known for uh, bringing material financial success. Uh, he was even very popular in the 3rd century before Christ, where uh, there were even special festivals ordained on his honor yeah, by, by Roman Senate. That, that, that was uh, the highest nobility. Uh, so they were, uh, they were appeasing uh, this pater and uh, Proserpina. Uh, that should have been, I think, his, his wife. Yeah, so uh, why they were doing that? Uh, they they wanted to to Rome to be successful financially, and they were even bringing sacrifices to 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 this Pater because he could be uh, similar as God Saturn, giving, but also taking, and these sacrifices were uh, of the animal. Uh, they were sacrificing animals. They were sacrificing lambs. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that was uh, uh, interesting. Is that uh, uh, Proserpina was a deity of uh, uh, of of Earth? Yeah, she, she was living in uh, it was Ktonic deity living in the underground. So something with this Pater, with Bluetooth, with Mammon, it's very connected with Earth. Earth is the element of this uh, of this energy. And uh, what fossilized tree Sepp was mentioning that it was taking energy from him. Always, when you work with elementary uh, energies related to Earth, these are ketonic. Under uh, by ketonic, we understand like underworld energies. By underworld, it's it takes a lot from you. So uh, first, energetically, the ritual is demanding. Uh, you have to provide some kind of uh, offerings, heavy instances. Uh, in our tra uh, in our uh, way of uh, operation, sometimes blood. Uh, in modern times, we we change the animal offering to to our own blood. Why? Uh, because uh, at the time when uh, the animals were practically the only way of very good food. It was rare to offer an animal. In our situation, in many, at least many developed countries, to offer a food is not a big gift. It should be something more personal, something that you are going to take. Uh, if they offered animals, they sometimes ate them, sometimes not. But offer your by offering, for example, your own blood, you are giving something very personal. Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot of blood. It can be a drop of blood from your finger. But I can tell you, if you will be doing this ritual, you will feel exhausted. It will, it really, by this, by this, by this drop of blood, you, it will take it. Yeah, you, you. But it always gives something back. Uh, so um, it's not about the amount; it's about the way what you want to give. Yeah. So uh, yes, and that's right. Yeah, that the blood is helpful for manifestation. This manifestation is also practically mostly in your mind, but it can bring you to the, the trans state 
uh, because it's a shock, uh, practically, in, uh, of, of uh, the moment of giving blood is uh, that you really do something that where even your, uh, that it, it, it puts your body into alert, yeah, that uh, it's an injury in a form. Yeah? So your, that this moment of shock, it can be pain, it can be pleasure, it can be, it can be giving of something like this will always put your mind into the uh, different state. Yeah, so uh, mm, so they were offering animals. Uh, I, I was doing that. And it was taking energy. And later on, it was also, as it was changing me, it constant uh, work. So mm, in recent times, I was using a lot of uh, tarot cards. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I work a little bit different through with tarot, as many uh, as many uh, people that just try to do the divination with tarot. I was using different decks. Some of the decks I'm using just for the uh, divination, my own work, or I do it for others. By the way, I can do the divination uh, of tarot if you like. Maybe yeah, check my web site, and uh, but rarely and. But I have a different deck that is used for the uh, where I put the that I try to uh, the, the each card represent a specific spirit that I worked with, and by by taking that card and focusing on the card, I got later on into quite it got a good results. Yeah, so uh, it puts you into the connection. There are other ways how to do it, uh, how to have uh, hypnosis and so on. But working with uh, with cards was helping me. Once you do this ritual, you will say, "I uh, Plutus name this card uh, uh, for uh, for you." By by using this card, I connect with you, and by focusing on this card, I get the insights from you. Is Plutus external being or internal being in myself? I don't know. I think it's both. Yeah. So uh, I am not um, fully thinking that uh, that the spirits can manifest without our own mind. They can only uh, manifest with our active mind working on. It's not they. They can manifest or be ex uh, externalized without our. Uh, willingness yeah so especially to have this deep connection i think partially they are materializing or becoming real through the ritual and once the ritual is done they become part of our deep subconsciousness the same as uh, that's the working with the demons that the demons are inside you the same is with the angels yeah, it's it's the manifestation of something internal, either the super ego, yeah, or or the or the, or the subconsciousness. Uh, but that's another thing. So working with this, mm, this I will give you just uh, the way what I did. Yeah. So uh, first was the cards. A later was it was the spell of the of of manifested will. So how we can manifest this will? I was, uh, how can we mm, do it? Yeah, so uh, that, for example, I want to be successful. I want to be rich, ma materially rich. Yeah, how to do this? Yeah, so there are many ways, but uh, you can have this vision, asking for things, how to make yourself powerful. But maybe you want to have like very simple spell just to find uh, $20 on the street. So i have found here and i don't know who the owner of this picture is so if uh, the owner is posted it on internet somewhere if he founds it it's not my work i'm just reproducing it but thank you very much and uh, i will show you yeah so this is the thing that usually you can work with yeah so uh just some of you know but this is just general discussion here. Okay, so probably you can see it. If not, just uh, make it the full screen. So this is the so-called sigil creation. So uh, 
this anonymous person here says that he believes in God, uh, I universe, I am a great manifester, thanks for everything. So it's not direct work with the Pluto, uh, but you can change it. Yeah, you can say uh, different saying. Yeah, I want to be rich. I want to be successful in my next work. I want to become promoted. I want to be financially free. I want this, 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 this. I want to be a good husband, good wife, whatever. Yeah. You write the intention and then you remove from, it can be a sentence, you remove the vowels and repeated letters. So you get like long and healthy hair. It can be health ritual even. Yeah. And long and healthy hair becomes this L and G D something. Yeah. Then you make alphanumeric grid starting with numbers one till 10 and then the alphabet numbers from A till Z. And you will this put this uh, shortened uh, message into the uh, alphanumeric grid. You will find the numbers, yeah, uh, and write its number plus remove uh, repeated numbers. So again, we are making it a little bit, a little bit shorter. Yeah. And uh, once you once you do this. You will create a wheel starting in any order, but I would prefer, uh, this is where I would say uh, I wouldn't do it one in, in any order. I would start with the, in case of positive spell, start with uh, a clockwise motion, starting with one till, uh, till nine. In case you want to do something not so nice, uh, type the word, type the numbers counterclockwise, yeah, and uh, then you create a sigil using the numbers, makes from the numbers. So you see it here, very simple, really very simple way of creating a sigil. If you work with the spirit, you can tell him, tell me your number, and. He can give you some strange string of numbers. It was what uh, Agrippa of Netesheim was, for example, working. And he got 957482. Strange numbers, right? And by this, you can create a simple sigil. What to do with the sigil? Focus on the sigil. Remember it in your mind. Burn it or put a little bit of blood or something on it, or incense if you are aware or afraid of blood. Don't use blood always, it does not, it's not needed, but it's a strong thing, not, not always needed, uh, because it also can deplete your will later time. You will start to think, oh, without blood, I can't do anything. No, you, you use blood when you want, and when you don't, you don't. You burn it, you will just imprint this sigil into your subconsciousness and you will say, this is now imprinted in me. It will work everywhere where I go. This will happen. It will happen inside of me. It will happen outside of me. It will influence everything around me, everyone around me. It works now as it is my will. You burn it. You forget that you created this ritual. You forget it. And it will work. So, if you look a little bit now on the uh, upper right side where you see this strange sigil with these strange numbers, you start to see the pattern what I am using. Uh, like uh, a week ago, someone asked me, what is in your sigil? It's a spell. I will not say what it represents because you shouldn't say, and it's nothing wrong. It's nothing bad. Yeah, just so you are not afraid. It's nothing bad. It's a very positive thing. Uh, so... The only difference is that the sigil that I am using is a little bit more advanced. Uh, I am uh, not using classical alphabet. I am using different font alphabets. And I am also not working with the counterclockwise motions, but I was using it like even more complex wise. But this is a standard way of internal sigil creation. So if you work with Mammon, let's say, I want to be successful. I want to find this and this. You do the ritual, you create this specific type of sigil, you activate it in your mind, you destroy the sigil, you forget later on about the active uh, things because it needs to work from your subconscious, you keep it work. Yeah. 
So it's like this. Um, if you will continue with this uh, form, like invoking the specific, not the spirit even, it's like the form, the, 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 this, uh, if, you, if you will be focusing on it more and more, do the second ritual, third ritual, uh, you will get into the rhythm working with this specific energy and the effects will be increased. When to do the ritual, how to do the ritual, you can improve it by working during specific hours, astronomical sections, uh, working with the earth sign and so on. But if, if you want to really go with this simple way, use the simple way. Uh, and I think in other videos, I describe a lot of things, uh, uh, how to work with it. But what is very important in all rituals, even for the beginners, is the uh, possibility to do your to work with your own imagination. First, I was trying to think like Yason, like a god, yeah, like like the half god, like demigod, like magician. So you put yourself into the role of magician, not directly asking for something, but really even even commanding, yeah? because you are commanding your soul. It's you're just manifesting it, and. Uh, you have to have strong imagination because uh, if you don't have the imagination, some people I know has very difficult to focus, try to use this method, work with numbers. Yeah. So then just burn the sigil. Maybe you have difficulties to, uh, to, uh, to have it in your mind. You will say, okay, I will not try to remember the sigil. I will just burn the sigil. There are the other ways. So you don't have to have it, but the more you can imagine, I always say, watch my video creating Astro Temple. I still think even after two years, it is uh, the techniques that I am using, the basic of the techniques that was not developed, of course, by me, <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, but by another uh, Czech magician. So long time ago, uh, and you will find more in the video. So and also how to make your magic work. This thing. So. That's it. Yeah. About Mammon, we don't have his sigil. The sigil is, uh, there is some sigil uh, in uh, that you can find on the internet, this very strange bee, you know. I don't think that's a genuine one. Uh, it's practically created by someone for his own understanding work and try to create your own sigil ask for the magic number to your help uh, or something for it and uh, also there are some practitioners that say that he has no sigil because as his name is practically wealth some people can draw his sigil as a us dollar or euro or something but this is also not his sigil because we can't say that mammon or this energy of wealth and in, in this positive wealth is just money. Money is only tool, is bland, is nothing. You can maybe uh, do a ritual where the, your offering uh, might be a small banknote, uh, which is not legal in many countries to destroy the banknote. But you can you can write your sigil or the specific sigil on the banknote and pay by that banknote, and it, uh, it 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 just fluctuates between the people and the energy is multiplied and this is your gift yeah to yourself and so on. So be always uh, innovative in the way of the rituals. Play with it. Do a little bit this chaotic uh, magic approach to it. Don't follow specific rules if you decide to follow very specific rules play then the total game play really total ritual according to their rules and then it's also fun but it's difficult sometimes because you need a lot of products and things for that and time but uh, i can tell you that the stronger imagination trend state you get that's the key to to success and uh understand that to work with this type of energy, it's not immediate. It might bring some small changes, some small money, 
but it will never change your life in a way of uh, like automatically that you will win something for nothing. And uh, so if someone asks me, yes, what do you think about my mom? And I said, yes, it's a cool thing. Many people will misunderstand me because they think that I'm greedy or something. But this is only because of the understanding that started in the 15th, 16th century. The last picture I wanted to show you before maybe the end of this uh, stream is uh, how Mammon as such was depicted in uh, Colin de Plancy's uh, Dictionnaire Infernal. Colin de Plancy was, uh, uh, was a person that was practically caricaturing uh, the demons in the 19th century. And he created very interesting uh, uh, figures of the demons that were paying to that spirit of the time. Yeah? So from this beautiful a Plutus statue or this Potter paintings. Okay, I haven't seen you show you new, maybe the this Potter painting. Uh, this is this is the painting of of uh, of this Potter. Yeah, so it's a painting from the 18th century where uh, in the center you can see Mercury, the uh, the the god of uh, or the messenger of gods. So. And uh, to the right, there is Flora, the goddess of nature. And this potter is to the left. Yeah, uh, It's very nice that uh, practically it really just shows this connection with Earth, with godlike astral realm, and this potter as a manifestation of wealth and happiness at the end. So it's like this trinity. By the way, it's, uh, uh, it's called the Wedding Feast of Cupid and Psyche. And you can find it in Genoa. Uh, in uh, Galleria Nazionale di Palazzo Spinola. Yeah, so so beautiful painting. But why I'm showing it is because Colin de Plancy uh, later on, a few hundreds of years ago, is really demonizing in a bad way how Mammon looks. So this is how he looks in Dictionnaire Infernal. Yeah, like greedy guy small dwarvish look sitting uh, on the on the treasure and uh only for himself you know afraid of losing things so this is manifested fear manifested fear and uh you don't want to invoke this lesser uh, energy yeah, you don't want to work with fear or and many people that are afraid now yeah, they say okay mamon it's crazy yeah so don't invoke this. Invoke uh, the higher. That's maybe what is dangerous in, in magic practice. That once you start to do this type of work, you have to dissociate yourself from this idea of Mamo, from this idea of calling the plants. Is, this is the arch demon of greed. Because if you will be in the situation that you will still fear it, because it's powerful energy to make yourself internally wealthy. And if you have still this something inside you, oh, yeah, it's an argument of, 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 of greed, you might become like that because you are programming yourself and you might become greedy and, 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 uh, and uh, envious person. So, yes, there is a risk. Always working with the demons, there is a shadowy side that we as a magician should control. That's why I, when I was working with Plutus, I was not that person. By the end, when I will be, uh, I don't have the picture here, but uh, at the beginning, uh, there will be a thumbnail on this video where it's also a painting of Mammon uh, and the human slave. So when working with this type of energy to become wealthy or doing a wealthy rituals, don't do it for small things. Want your total transformation. Why ask for so little? Why ask? But not from the greedy way. Don't ask for, I need really money. I will I will do everything for, for it. No. You tell, I am going to become rich in a way. And maybe not rich, maybe successful. It's the rich is, all, again, just showing the money. Yeah, Money is just a tool. You can become successful, but don't invoke the negative part of it. Don't say... I have to be greedy that because in that way only Mammon will like me because only of that, because Mammon is greedy. No, this is the imprint of Christianity 
or uh, this Christian, or not even Christian, it may be this medieval mindset, this fear of demons, this fear of internal darkness in us. Yeah. So uh, when you want to be successful, you have to be benevolent and open to things. Uh, so um, I think it created a lot of pain and fear for many practitioners, even now. So many new practitioners say, I, I will never work with this because they are evil. Uh, they are evil because of your fear. The fear is the blocker of, of magical thinking. Yeah, so just beware the false demons. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I spoke quite a lot. And uh, I think the time is practically over for today. So um i will try to answer maybe one or two questions i will check uh, and uh, if you have more questions please leave a comment below uh it was a little bit untraditional discussion on theory of magic or mine but i want to speak a little bit more next week uh, about uh, as i was mentioning this fear and things like that i i i, I think i i want to discuss one book with you that I have recently found in one old uh, bookstore. And the book is relatively, uh, it can be still bought on Amazon, but I, it's, it will be not just review of the book, but uh, it's called uh, The Demonology of King James I. And it's uh, actually, um, it's a book that is uh, written by, uh, by, by real by King James the <laughs> first from the 16th century who was a, a big hunter of the witches and uh, he was so fearful of Satan and demons that he caused death of dozens of uh, poor people mostly women and in his book uh, in the, the, from the 16th century, he is describing who the witches are, what are the gifts of the demons, and what it's everything around. And uh, the specific thing of this is that this book was found in the bookstore, and it's a full of written comments by pencil by another magician practitioner that I don't know about, who probably sold this book. And it's full of interesting comments of someone I don't know, and I will share this book with you because it's interesting and it will maybe teach us something of, of the demons and how, how it is, was perceived by inquisitors. So uh, thank you very much. Have a great day. Uh, maybe do the little spell to make yourself uh, successful in whatever what you are looking for. Don't be greedy, <laughs> give freely. And uh, if you like, yeah, just let me know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.